Hi y'all, welcome back to my shop. I don't have a project. This is kind of a, a moment of peace, I guess. I'm going to give a shout out, talk about a new uh, a new uh, sanding sanding tool I got and, and kind of a one-off uh, project uh, is kind of an example of, of things you can do with your, your lathe. I uh, also wanted to mention that, uh, you know, I, ha I was gone on a two-week over a two-week cruise over the Christmas holidays. It was very nice, but uh, I've, I've just about caught up. But I'm uh, fixing to deal with tax season coming up. As some of y'all may know, I'm an AARP tax aide, uh, so I stay pretty busy during the, during tax season doing pro bono uh, tax work as a as a volunteer. I'm a site coordinator, and I've had to uh, recruit some folks and do do some training as well as get caught up myself. So that's going to impact my my videos during tax season a little bit. I'll, I'll try to get out one a week. Uh, don't think I'll be able to get out two a week like I did uh, just about all of, all of 2018. thought I'd just take a minute and show you a little project I was working on. I was helping somebody, uh, he needed a piece of round plexiglass cut for an uh, uh, instrument panel for an old car he was retrofitting and he was trying to figure out how to do it. So I said, well, bring it over here and we'll figure it out. So I figured the approach to do it is to do it on a lathe. Let me show you how I did that. So I mounted a scrap of cardboard on a uh, one of my new uh, faceplate rings mounted it on my chuck. Then I just took some, cut out a square of uh, this acrylic, uh, mounted it here with some double stick tape. Uh, then I used a template. I took a scrap of uh, Bradford Pear spindle scrap that I had, turned it round to the exact dimension. While it was still on the lathe and running true, I drilled a hole through it. So then when I put the square on here, I could bring up the tailstock support. And then I just used like this to give it support. And then I just used a thin parting tool and off it went. So here's the piece of acrylic, still got double stick tape on it and protective on the other side. And it just goes to show you there's, there's things you can do on the lathe to problem solve, to, to fix something that uh, there might be better ways, but if you're a wood turner, this is a way you can do it. Hi y'all, I just got this new uh, toy from Wood Turner's Wonders. It's a uh, turbo... Turner Turbo Wonder, it's an inertia sander, and it's got uh, uh, articulating arms so you can make a couple adjustments, and it comes in with a 2 inch and a 3 inch uh, mandrel, so let's check it out. I'm using a little bit of that sanding, uh, sanding paste that I made out of uh, beeswax in an earlier video. Keep the dust down. I had a pretty good cut, so I'm starting with 180 grit. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's that looks that looks good. I I pretty didn't really have any uh, tool marks to speak of, so so that's that's looking good. We get a little bit more to go up to another grit, and then I'll start texturing this thing. You gotta uh, hold it near the lower edge so it'll it'll move. Keep it moving. I've used one of these before, but it wasn't nearly as nice as this. And uh, I got kind of got used to a uh, sander, power sander. But uh, I think a power sander works best if you're doing the very lowest grits, like uh, 80, 100, 120, uh, up past 120. I think this inertial sander works real good. Now I think it, it with this articulation, I think it can work especially well in in certain uh, hollow forms or deep pencil pots or uh, something wide enough where you can get this articulated arm in along the wall. Certain bases, as it is on the inside. There's a couple of things I really like about it. The articulation is is one. The other one is the footprint. This is a lot easier to store than uh, than a powered powered sander. Um, you know, I, I haven't found a way to mount this on the wall yet, but I will. Uh, the other thing is you don't have a cord to it, which makes it convenient. It's one less thing to deal with, and, it, and that also makes it real good if you're on the road. Uh, whether you're at a, a demonstration or, or out somewhere with a small mini lathe, uh, this is a lot easier than having to carry a, a larger drill and have to deal with the with the plug. 
All right, now we're going to try the turbo, uh, turbo Wonder inertia sander. Uh, in case I didn't mention, it's got a bearing on it, so it, it runs real freely. And I've put a little uh, uh, sanding paste in there to keep the dust down. So let's let's give it a shot. I'm using a 120 grit, and so I think it's quite as good a finish inside as outside. Okay, we're getting nibs going in the middle. Uh, got just a few tool marks here on the outside. I still got to deal with, but that uh, that inertia sander works works real good. I like it. You know, when I first started turning about 12 years ago, I got one of these inertia sanders uh, with my mini lathe, and it's uh, I think it was uh, Penn Penn State. Uh, but I couldn't swear to that Sorby has one, but it doesn't have Robert Sorby on it. But the problem I have with it is it, it has a little wear. It doesn't use a bearing. I think it just, uh, there may be a bronze bushing in there, but but it it, it shimmied too much uh, after a little bit of use. And it also has such a long area here that, you know, it accentuated that. So I quickly moved on to a uh, power sander. But uh, after using this one, uh, with this nice substantial handle, I think I'm going to uh, go back and play with this a lot more because I, I think I'm going to like it. If you're a visitor, please leave a comment, hit the like button, uh, subscribe. Y'all stay safe, come on back here.